Hi everyone, welcome to this series where we'll be talking about building applications with infrastructure as code. I'm Talia Nasi and I'm a lead developer advocate here at Akamai. In the previous video, we learned how to protect sensitive input variables in our configuration files. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about managing resource drift and making sure that you don't get configuration drift inside of your configuration files. When you use a declarative approach to writing configuration files, you describe the end state of your infrastructure. And when you apply those changes, your infrastructure's code tool will create, update, or delete any resources that were affected. At the same time, your state file will be updated to match what's currently in production. When you make manual changes to your resource configurations, the state file will be out of sync and you will encounter something called configuration drift or resource drift. Now, one benefit to infrastructure as code is that it eliminates configuration drift. So let's say you get paged one night because there's an incident for your mobile application. So you look at the logs, you identify the problem, and in order to fix it, you have to update a specific configuration in production. So you make the change in production and you go back to sleep because it's super late. Although you've fixed the issue, you've just created an even bigger divide between your staging and production environments because you didn't make the same change in your staging environment. So many times, staging environments are not the same as production environments because of changes made during incident management, and this is called configuration drift. So with infrastructure as code, rather than having that shift in environments, you have one central authority that is this configuration file, and then you push the infrastructure changes through. So essentially, configuration drifts are untracked changes. So every time you apply changes in your configuration file, one of the tools you can use is called Terraform. And we talked about Terraform a little bit in our previous videos. So Terraform specifically is gonna store information locally in a file named terraform.tfstate. And this file tracks metadata about the resources. It maps the resources that are defined in the configuration file with real world resources, and it handles the synchronization of everything. To show the current state of your application, enter the command terraform show in your terminal. You can also use terraform state show to view a specific resource. One of the ways to ensure that you don't encounter configuration drift is by using the command terraform refresh. When you run this command, you reconsole the resources tracked by the state file with the real world. So Terraform will query your infrastructure providers and it'll find out what's currently running in production. It's then gonna update the state file with this information. However, it's important to note that Terraform only refreshes resources under its management. And although the state file is updated, running Terraform refresh does not modify any infrastructure or resources. The benefit of this command is that you're able to detect configuration drift, see what's out of sync, and update what needs to be updated. Thanks everybody for tuning in. In this video, you learned how to manage resource drift and make sure your state files are up to date. And in the next video, we'll learn how to utilize infrastructure as code registries to write configuration files. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel to make sure that you get updated on all of our content and all of our videos.